Hello and welcome to Module 5, Spanning Tree Protocol Concepts. Uh, please don't forget to take your notes and submit them as homework when you're all done. All right, so let us begin. So what is the purpose of the spanning tree? Here's what I want you to write down. The first sentence is to allow layer 2 redundancy by creating a loop-free network. What do I mean by a loop-free? Frames circling around forever. All right. Layer three, layer three routers, when they route packets across the internet, they have the TTL number and the hop limit to take care of that. You have a limited amount of time um, that the packet has to reach its destination. If the hop count or the hop limit with IPv6, if that reaches zero, then the packet gets dropped. At layer two with the frames, there is no such thing. There's no label on the frame to do that. So that frame could, you know, loop around forever, and that's not a problem. That is a problem, I mean. And, and therefore, you need something to control that. That's what STP is there for. All right, so um, how does the, uh, the spanning tree work? So number one, it allows one path to the destination while the other links to the destinations are blocked. So if you have something like this, we have redundancy. This block, this uh, path will be blocked and all packets going from PC1, PC2, and PC3 to destined to PC4 will take this path. All right, if anything goes wrong with this path, if it goes down, this will automatically open up, then they are going to re be re rerouted and go this way to PC4, automatically, dynamically, in other words. All right, so that's a great thing to happen. Um, if STP is not implemented, that means uh, none of the links to the destinations are, are going to be blocked. Frame will be open. So if you have nothing, or let's say this is not blocked, and there's no STP running on any of the switch, switches. If somebody, for example, you're going to have three problems, MAC address instability, MAC address table instability, which means the MAC addresses are, you know, you are not going to trust any of the MAC addresses in the MAC address tables of any of these switches because packets are going to be going in and out of a, pro a problem. The link is going to be saturated, okay? And number three, which is the most commonly used, is really broadcasting. The CPU, high CPU utilizations or CPU and PCs are going to be not going to be able to handle any of this. All right, let me repeat again, and I want you to write this down. Frames does not do not have a label such as IPv4 TTL number or IPv6 hop, count, hop limit to limit the amount of time a packet must reach its destination. So therefore, you need STP. Without STP, layer two looping will cause broadcast storms when a host sends out an ARP request the switch will act like a hub in seconds. So, for example, PC1 wants to get the MAC address of IPv4 because it wants to send them data. Remember, there's nothing, no STP is running, so this is not blocked. So when he sends out an ARP request, which is a broadcast message, the broadcast message is going to go this way and that way. And when the broadcast message comes from here, and he's going to what? Send the broadcast message back because that's what a broadcast message is, although he gets it too. But when he receives a broadcast message, he sends it back and it's just broadcast storm will occur and nobody is going to be able to communicate because broadcast messages are constantly looping around the switches and that will bring down, that will cause uh, the high CPU utilizations and link saturations and all the wonderful stuff that may occur without having STP running. And therefore, you're really acting even worse than a hub. Because what, what is a hub? A hub receives a frame and sends it to all the ports because it doesn't have, it's not managed. All right, so, um, so what are the different types of loops, broadcast uh, storms, which we just explained. And now let's talk about the STP, the STA, the spanning tree algorithm. Now, here's what I want you to write. The spanning tree algorithm, SCA, write this down, works by selecting a root bridge. The root bridge is the reference point for the entire network. Okay, so 
here's what I want you to imagine. Imagine there are, you have a tree, right? That's why we call it the spanning tree. We have a tree and you have fruits all over the tree. The fruits are, let's say, apples. They are networks. They're all networks. And uh, if you are located at the root of the tree, you'll be able to find uh, of the tree, and there are multiple branches uh, to get to the fruit. STA will open up the best path, which is the quickest, to get to the destination and block all other branches. If one of the branches breaks, STA will automatically use another branch that is not used. What do I mean by that? Let's say all the apples, you know, one apple wants to get to another apple on another branch in the tree, and there are multiple ways, assuming that all branches are connected to each other, right? So there are multiple ways, and they don't know, you know, they get confused, and they don't know how to reach the destination. They don't know how, they don't know how to reach each other. But the best way to do it is they know if they go to the root of the tree, the root, there's the master, it will find a path to the destination you need to go to and make sure that you take that path to the destination and you will not use any other branches to get there. If the path that the root sends you somehow breaks, the root will find you another path to get to your destination. So you, what you are concerned with is you want to get to the root because once you get to the root of the tree, then the root will find you a path to your destination. Is that clear? So what we're going to do is, as a whole bunch of fruits together, let's talk about the operation. We are all the fruits on the table, all the networks on the, on the table, on the tree, all the networks on the tree, what they're going to do is they're going to elect where the root is. They're going to elect um, a root bridge. And once they do that, what they're going to do is they're going to find a path, the best root ports to the uh, to the root bridge. So once they elect their root bridge, once in other words, once they find out where the root is, they're going to go and try to find the best path to get there. And they're going to open up their paths using the designated ports, and then they need to find out which branches need to be blocked, and they will do that too. All right, so. First thing that happens, switches use bridge protocol data units, BPDUs, to share information about themselves and their connections. Bridge, bridge protocol data units are used to elect root bridges, root ports, designated ports, and alternate ports. Each bridge protocol data unit contains a bridge ID that identifies which switch sends the BPDU, the Bridge Protocol Data Unit. The bridge ID is, invo is involved in making many of the STA, which is the Spanning Tree Algorithm, decisions, including the root bridge and the port rules. So what the networks, what these fruits do, they have a bridge ID, and they pass the bridge ID to each other to see who has the lowest bridge ID. And whoever has the lowest bridge ID will be elected as the root bridge. That's what we're talking about. What is the bridge ID? The bridge ID consists of three things. Bridge priority, extended system ID, and the MAC address. The bridge, uh, the bridge priority has the number, the default number is 32768. Okay, please write these down. And zero is the best. If you make the bridge ID zero, because they'll be in the most significant part of the bridge ID, that means it's going to make your bridge ID the lowest, and you will win the election. And if you need, you can increment the priority number by the number 4096, right? 4096, and the maximum you can go is 6244. All right, so if you want a specific switch to be the root bridge make his, his ID either zero or maybe 4096. All right, the extended system ID is the VLAN number, and the MAC address will be at the least significant part. So if you don't do anything, if you don't change the bridge priority on the bridge ID or what, what and the system ID is, which is the VLAN, you don't do anything with that, the election will still occur by default because STP is running by default on the switches, 
and the switch with the lowest MAC address will win the elections. You probably don't want to do that because you want to pick your own switch. So you, you know which switch you want it to be the, the root bridge. So what you would do is go to that switch and change and lower its priority number, bridge priority number. All right, so the first thing that happened is step number one. When you turn this, please write the following down. When you boot up the um, the switches, we are go the they are going to elect your uh, root bridge. So when you boot, the switches create their bridge ID numbers, and they share it with each other. So they pass their bridge IDs to each other. The switch with the lowest bridge ID number wins the election. If you have a bridge priority, as the, if you leave the bridge ID uh, priority as a default then the switch with the lowest MAC address wins. To make a specific uh, switch win the election, make the priority number than the default. Step number two, again, write this down. After you select, uh, after the, uh, the root bridge has been elected, then bridges will have to create all the non-bridges, uh, non-root bridges have to create what's called a root bridge. So if this is the root bridge, these guys over here, they're going to say, hey, I need to find out a root bridge, which is which port is the closest to get to the root bridge. So if you are on the tree, you say, okay, which branch do I, which is the closest branch do I get to the root of the tree so I can get there in case I need to go to a destination? And that's what happens. So the second step after the root bridge has been elected is you elect the root ports. One root bridge is elected all switches need to find the best path to the root bridge and this is done by selecting the links with the lowest cost number all right so here's the cost numbers if you have a, a branch or a link that is 10 gigabit that link is given a cost number of two if it's one gigabit it's given number four and so on so the branch with the quickest branch to get to the root will be picked because they'll have the lowest um uh, cost number all right you can configure the path the path cost to change the path you can do that by the way you doesn't you don't have to take the defaults as we seen previously um you don't have to here let me show you you don't have to pick these you can change them if you wanted to because if you know if you leave them as the default then the path will always be the same if you want to change the path of you know, to the root, you can change these numbers, either lower them or increase them, depending on how you do it. All right, step number three, then all switches will create designated ports. So after the root ports, which is the closest, has been elected, then designated ports will be elected. The root bridge will always have all of its ports designated. Designated mean data can go in and out, all right? A root port also forwards data in and out. Now, after all the designated, so this is root port, root port. Again, the root bridge will have all of its ports designated. Now, what about these ports right here? They have to talk to each other, switch three and two. And the, the guy with the lowest MAC address will make his bridge, he will make his port uh, designated. And the other guy will have um his port blocked or we call alternate where data cannot go in and out all right so that's how you assign root ports designated ports or alternate ports all right so this would be an alternate because they talk to each other and he turned out to have a smaller bridge id number and this he says okay i'm going to make mine designated and you have to block yours all right so after that's done um, I'll stop right here. So write everything that I told you to write up and I'll see you on the next video. Uh, and then we'll talk about election of a, okay, then we'll continue with this. All right. So again, write everything up, upload them as homework, and I'll see you on the next video.